since I've got so many green cards in my hand, we're going to move them up on the agenda. And the first speaker is going to be Mayor Anthony Silva. I would first like to start off by saying what a great looking crowd we have in the audience. We have wonderful teachers. Not only teachers, but paraprofessionals. And uh, the teachers deserve a contract. What do you guys think? Thank you for all that you do for the residents of South and the kids. President Garcia and members of the board, I'm speaking to you tonight as a resident of Stockton. First off, I'd like to congratulate you on taking the necessary steps to fix the issues within your police department. Sometimes admitting that there is a problem is a key to rebuilding public trust. As you are aware, I spent four years on this school board during some very busy times for Stockton Unified when the district was reconfigured, including the passage of two school bonds. I also had the opportunity of hiring Dr. Jack McLaughlin, who in my opinion was one of the best superintendents this city has ever seen. Some of the same staff members and consultants are still here serving today. I see Julie Penn in the audience and Diane Barth uh, back there and uh, Marie Nakamura, your legal counsel. Each week I was provided with relevant information from staff and prior to each board meeting, I would sit in closed session and listen to staff and lawyers tell the board which students should be expelled, which teachers or custodians should be fired, and which lawsuits should be paid out because it was our fault. Well, I'm guessing that not much has changed, and every two weeks, you're still provided with the same information. It's always so difficult for me when members of the public or unions, or even principals, would have contrasting information. Who should I believe? Do I always take the side of the superintendent and his administration? Why not? He makes 230000 a year. They must know what's right and wrong. Or should I always listen to the lawyers? Why not? Their firm makes hundreds of thousands per year. They make money if the district does something right, but they also make money if the district does something wrong. But just imagine how many times these administrators and their recommendations have been wrong and cost taxpayers. Your legal firm has known about the deficiencies in your PD department and never did anything about them to correct the results, and now you have pending legal battles. I have been in closed sessions only to be swayed to pay out employees that were still currently working for the district because they were mistreated by human resources. I guess my point is, is that you as elected trustees have to remember why you were sitting up there. Yeah. It's not to go with the superintendent's recommendations 90 to 100% of the time, but it's to ask tough questions, investigate independently on your own, and figure out what is BS and what is the truth. But more importantly, what is in the best interest of the children? Yeah. Tonight, your staff is recommending that 12 of the after school program sites that were formerly operated by the Boys and Girls Club will be divided up between the YMCA and another nonprofit. I'm not here tonight to sway your vote or to change the outcome, but I am here to tell you that the action is wrong and it will be proven wrong in the future. This is supposed to be about kids, but it's not. This is a little turf war that's about adult issues and adult personalities. Now, a few of you on this board know me personally, and you have witnessed firsthand the joy that the club has brought to the lives of the less fortunate. Gloria, you have been there at Disneyland with the kids with me. Kathy, you've been there at summer camp. Sal, you've always been there to support the poorest children of this city. And, and Mr. Rivera, what would your friend Tom Burns say if he were here on this matter? Mr. Smith, have you forgotten why you came to be elected on this board? You were elected because the former trustee sitting in your seat forgot to put the kids first. And his number one priority was not to protect the kids, but protect the superintendent. Mr. Barilla, I know you don't care for me, but I still respect you and your position, and I listen to you when you come to the clock meetings. You guys are punishing an organization without due process and without due cause. You breached a contract without a 30-day notice. Your staff secretly were recruiting club staff to work for the YMCA with employees from the district. And now you can believe if you want the garbage about 17 minutes, people Anthony, not having no time left behind. And this was obviously the same information that you provided the grand jury, but it turns out this is not accurate and it will be proven. The timing of this grand jury report is also suspect. I'm on my last page. 
Yes, I am passionate about the kids of Stockton. For 51 years in this community, a nonprofit has been providing kids with summer camps, summer day camps, Silver Lake, and swimming pools. What well, makes me sad is that this administration is giving up on the kids of this great organization because of politics and some newspaper articles. Here's a news flash. The newspaper is not always right, so candidates that get endorsed by them do not always win. Thank you.